Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Planet Zoo. My name is Nisse and uh, today we're gonna make something that I didn't plan <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm still battling a certain virus at this point so my voice is a little weird but uh, we're gonna work with it. Also the fact that I still don't really feel about chugging a camera up my face so we don't make any mud videos today. So uh, when I saw the anniversary live stream, I feel like I'm gonna make a anniversary habitat and it's or a habitat for the anniversary animal is not probably more correct. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I love making habitats for not only one animal but quite a few at the time. Uh, today I did limit myself just a smidge so we only have two animals in here and that's of course the red deer and the european fellow deer uh, i will however here in my voiceover focus mostly on the red deer but there will be a little bit uh, of the information that will fit both since they are both deers living in roughly the same areas uh, not completely but roughly um, and they have a lot of the same they eat the same, they drink the same, they look kind of the same. Uh, so so there's a few things that will count for both of them. But uh, I will talk about the red deer since that's the new one. And I have talked about the European fall of deer multiple times here on my channel already. So I hope you're okay with that. But first of all, I just want to say what I noticed when I put these two deers in uh, beside each other. I actually thought that Frontier have made a mistake since the red deer is so much bigger than the European fellow deer. And at the same time, the um, uh, red deer's babies are still having this uh, light reddish brown color with these beautiful spots so the European fellow deer kind of looks like baby uh, red deers uh, so I thought that must be a mistake so that's of course the first thing I checked and according to animalia.io which is this website I mostly use for information again link for both deers will be in the description below so you can go and read more about both of them yourself if you feel like it. Uh, I can recommend it. Uh, it's fun to learn about new animals and uh, I kind of figure that if you're here you kind of like animals. Anyway, the European fallow deer or just the fallow deer uh, weighs from 30 to 100 kilos which is from 60 to 200 pounds roughly. Um, Keep in mind that the males for most deers are much bigger than females and the antlers also weigh a fair amount. So therefore the does will be around these 30 and up and the males from 100 and down. Looking at the red deer, it weighs from... Um, sorry, um, 30 to 100 kilo. Uh, Looking at the red deer, they weigh from 120 kilo to 240 kilos. This is 20 kilos for the lightest red deer, 20 kilo more than the heaviest fallow deer. So there is a big difference and the red deer can weigh up to 240 kilos being uh, a weight um, what's it called? Oh, a weight of a hundred and sorry, two hundred and forty pounds to four hundred and eighty pounds. So these are big. They are so big uh, and kind of majestic. And uh, deer comes in a lot of different sizes. I already knew that, but I didn't know the red deer was so big. I just wanted to clarify this because I think uh, I'm not the only one looking at this size differing and figure that might be a mistake. Um, but uh, that being said, let's focus on the red deer. The red deer is very recognizable, mostly by the dark 
very red color which in the summer is this yeah dark red brown color uh, where in the winter they can be a little harder to distinguish from other deers when they get a winter coat of grayish brown color um both of them uh, uh both the summer and winter coat have a lighter uh, or paler underbelly and for the females they also have a lighter uh, neck or uh, throat sorry not the entire neck just the throat and face um which is more prominent in the summer coat than in the winter coat but it's still there in the winter coat the males also have their famous antlers and the antlers are formed so they have these longer branches all facing backwards and then they have shorter branches on the longer branches pointing forwards the antlers of course grow if it's year and uh, therefore you can also until not tell the exact age but you can kind of compare them over uh, area and see which one is the oldest as i already mentioned the red deer and the fallow deer lives a lot of the same places but just to clarify uh, not all of the same the red deer lives in uh, algeria armenia austria belarus belgium bosnia and sorry Bosnia and Herzegovina, I think, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, that's here where I live, Estonia, France, Georgia, Germany, Hungary, Iran, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Litauen, sorry, Litania, Luxembourg, Macedonia, Moldova, Montenegro, Netherlands, Norway, Port <laughs> sorry not Portland, Poland, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Sweden, Switzerland, Tunisia, Turkey, Ukraine, Greece and Morocco. So of course if you live here in Europe uh most countries have them so you probably seen them even though you may not have known it was that subspecies of the year you have probably seen them around um but other places where they are uh, more uncommon to see could be africa asia uh, and north america and of course they can only live that many places because they live in a lot of d different both uh, biomes and climazones. Well, well, climazones, they live in two. They live in the temperate and the cold climazones. But for biomes, there's everything between scrubland, rocky areas, anthropogenic areas, agricultural areas, and the farmers don't like them, I promise you that. Grassland, European, mountains, forest, and woodlands. So. They just make do with what they get, so that should be kind of easy to accommodate in a zoo. And as you already can see here, they will have to use their mountainous muscles to move around this habitat. Um, I already decided, because I already built this Saturday speed build, that we will have some mountains or at least these cliff areas around the zoo. So uh, when it comes to tomorrow, you will see more of that on the other side of the zoo. Um, and again, I could also have chosen that we live in a flatter area. I just like the idea that you place your zoo in an already beautiful place and then just try to utilize that more. I will like to specify this part because there's something that your zoopedia won't tell you. Uh, about the red deer and that's because we only have one setting for each thing in the game and when it comes to group sizes i think they said uh, like 10 or 9 or something like that was the maximum uh, that's not really true but red deers have uh, summer groups that can uh, be up to 400 individuals and then they uh, split up to smaller herds uh, through the mating season um, and there the male will have his little 
harem of females and that's the group size they put in to Superior. Not that you should make a group size of 400 individuals, just know that in the summer they lift these 400 individuals, all females, the males aren't invited uh, together and uh, that's very matriarchal and especially because they don't have the protection of the males. Think about it, the males are the only ones with weapons but the females are like, nope. We can handle this, but your superior are more based to tell you what a zoo would go for and a zoo would go for a harem that would be this, I think, one male and eight females or something like that. But back to the big summer group, what does these 400 female do when a predator arrives? And uh, they could make a run for it, they could probably do that. Uh, but that's actually up to the leader. The leader would, would be a single female, uh, probably a older um, one that have made the travels before. Again, they do migrate during the summer. I will get back to that. Um, but most likely they will stand their grounds and the m biggest and most robust bust part of the females will attack the predator and use their front hoofs sorry i'm not sure they're called hoofs when it's on a deer uh, but yeah use their front legs to actually attack the predator and remember most predators don't attack like lions do in big group and can uh so around the entire herd again 400 individuals that would be a lot to surround so therefore a lot of predators wouldn't have be able to do anything uh, against such a big herd or group of females just attacking you like that uh, and i think most males uh, would agree with me on that anyway to the migrating part they do migrate, but it's not necessarily on one land, but more like up and down, up and down. So in the summer, they will search up a mountain if they can. For instance, in Denmark, we have uh, the Sky Mountain in Denmark. It's called, and I think it's like 200 meter above water. That's the high, highest point in Denmark or something like that. Uh, so they wouldn't be able to do that here, but places where they can, especially the hotter areas where they live, they will actually search up the mountains where they would be cooler. And then when the summer are coming to an end, they will search back down again. And then just, just to not forget the males completely here. Um, they also form herds, not up to 400 individuals at all, but enough to take care of each other, protect each other, uh, always um, deers are made for groups and therefore it is important for them to know for instance when I eat someone else in a, is on the lookout and stuff like that and therefore they need their herd. Um, so therefore they can be very territorial of course but only in the um, mating season. But anyway, we arrived to the fall and it's time to split up for this big female group. We come back down the mountains, it's nice, it's cold, we're hitting September, maybe early October. And then the males arrive and they will fight for the harem uh, and thereby find their own harem in this big group of 400 females. And then they will mate with every single individual of that harem. After this, the females will be pregnant for 242-262 days, which I calculated to be around 7.8 to 8.6 months, or roughly about 8 months give and take. Uh, every female will only give birth to a single fawn and uh, she will take care of that for the next year. Again, it would be kind of difficult for the daddies to uh, keep around and take care of the baby 
when he's living in a different hood. So therefore, it's like they made and he, he will actually stay with the mothers for a while. And then at a time when it's time to give birth, the females will search away. As far as I understand it. Um, again, here it's... Oh, I think uh, a summer at this time. So it's about time that they find their female group at this point. So they will go out, find a nice and peace and quiet place to give birth on their own. And then when they are ready to rejoin a herd, they won't go back to the male herd or the mixed herd. They will instead go... Um, out and find this big female herd and that will be full of other moms but also older females that either aren't able to give birth anymore or just didn't get pregnant uh, so therefore there are a lot of aunts and friends and kids to play with in this bigger herd and there's always someone to take care of the young now when it comes to threats for the red deer uh, keep in mind they live a lot of places so even though they have a lot of predators and a lot of big predators it doesn't mean that all of the, the predators live the same place so deers in one area of the world have one issue uh, and red deers in another area of the world have another issue here um but for big predators we have the lion bears and the gray Wolves, I also assume other uh, subspecies of wolves, but here it specifies the grey ones. Uh, and the calves can also be taken by bobcats or coyotes. Besides that, it is also legal to hunt them in a lot of countries still. Um, which I understand, to be honest, they taste delicious. Some countries also... Um, have farm where you farm them as pigs or cows or something like that so that also makes sense for the food but i also understand that for some people hunting is a sport and very close to religion for some people not that i necessarily agree or disagree it's just i understand that's how some people see it a lot not all but a lot of the countries that do allow to hunt them still um keep in mind that they have regulation for it i think in denmark it's like the in the fall there's a specific date where the hunt starts and then you can hunt them until spring and this also makes sure that you don't hunt them in the summer when all of the calves are all unable to take care of themselves um so you don't kill the mom for instance we don't have any bambi stories here I know these rules change a lot from country to country, but I know that's something we have here in Denmark and also other countries. And just before I leave you all to the cinematics, I would like to just clarify. I know I'm normally very much after hunters and don't like hunting uh, precious animals. And it's not just because these taste good, uh, but it is also that... Uh, there is approximately 1.7 million individuals in the world at this point. Therefore, of course, they are least concerned animal on the IUCN red list. And in some populations, they are really big pests. They can ruin big fields of crops for the farmers. Um, and if their numbers just are allowed to run wild, then you are unable to regulate them. And they will, first of all, ruin fields and food for the humans. But they will also take food away from other and smaller animals because they are so big. Therefore, I understand the hunting. <laughs> and I uh, do agree with the regulations for them. It's not because they are just delicious that I agree and are okay with the hunting part. Anyway, cinematics, I'll be back.
Okay guys, that was all I got for you today. Again, I didn't plan on this. I had no idea we were getting a red beer and initially when I saw it, I didn't want to pull for it. But then I saw the anniversary live stream and I just felt like I have to do this and I really liked the result so I'm happy I did it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it too and you know the drill guys, like subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. I really hope to see you again, I'll tell you in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys!